Hello, my name's Tom. I'm an education officer at the Small Peace Trust. And what I'd like to do today is show you a simple project that you might be able to do at home. Now, normally our projects involve a variety of kit um, that include things that you probably don't have. I'll show you an example that's relevant to what we're going to be making today. So, if I were to come to your school, I might get you to build something like this. A simple vehicle, which is self-powered and can move across a room like so. This vehicle has some important components. The chassis, that's the base of the vehicle that the other parts are attached to. A power source. Here we have a supercapacitor and I've charged that up using a battery pack. And a motor. And this is what um, actually makes the vehicle move along. We also have two axles. And in this case, the axles are made of wood and go through some straws so they can spin freely. The straws are important here, like a tube, and some wheels. Now, this is not what we're going to be making today because there's lots of these components that you won't have, but we can replicate them with things that we find at home. For our power source, we're not going to have a capacitor and a motor. Instead, something that we can power ourselves. What we're going to use today is an elastic band. An elastic band is a good way to store energy. So when I take this elastic band, by stretching it like this, I'm taking energy from my body and putting it into the elastic band. So when I do this, it now has stored elastic potential energy. If I want to release that energy, the rubber band flies away. This is what's going to power our vehicle. So what I'm going to do is build an example vehicle. Now you might not have exactly the same materials as me. I'm improvising and you're going to have to do the same. For our axles, it's unlikely you're going to have wooden dowel like this. What I'm going to use today are pencils. This is the sort of thing you might have spares of lying around the house. You'll need two or perhaps three depending on your design. Alternatives to pencils, you might be able to use cocktail sticks or skewers or really anything long and thin and ideally cylindrical. Wheels. There's a number of different things we could try in order to make a wheel. An obvious solution is bottle tops. These are particularly good, these milk bottle tops, because they have little ridges all the way around and they act like the treads of a tyre. They'll grip onto the surface and help give you traction on the floor. But if you wanted to, you can attempt to cut discs out of cardboard, for example. The chassis of your vehicle. We've got a variety of different materials here that we can look at. We've got cardboard of different sizes and strengths. This is thicker cardboard from a cardboard box. And this is some breakfast cereal. We also have this tub or a milk bottle. I've decided today to use this milk bottle. Now I'll warn you, I've never made a vehicle like this before using a bottle like this. I don't yet know how it's going to turn out, but I'll build it and we'll find out. I need to find a way to cut this thing the way I want it. I think the best plan of action will be to go around this line of the bottle and use the bottom part of the floor of my car. I'm intending to leave some of the sides on as well, and that's something that I can pass my pencils through. This hopefully should avoid the need for me to find another type of tube. But if I did need a tube, I could use, for example, some rolled up newspaper. I take my scissors and I begin to cut. This is what I'm left with, the floor of my vehicle. Next, I need to make some holes to pass my axles through. Now, I could just punch straight through with my pencil. I happen to have this handy hole punch. My axles are now in place, but they're still too tight. There's some work I need to do there. My wheels. I want to make a hole in the centre of this bottle top to pass my axle through. To do that, I'm going to take a pencil. There's a small mark at the centre. 
can already see where the middle is. If there's not a mark in yours, you need to find a way to measure that out. It needs to be dead centre. And because this is only soft plastic, I can simply push my pencil through like that. And there we have a little hole. Now I can take my pencil very carefully, push that all the way through. And that's working great. I can now take my four wheels and put them onto my vehicle. Okay, things are beginning to take shape. Here we have the chassis of our vehicle. We have two axles running through the chassis and we've attached four wheels. What we don't yet have is power. So I now need to fix an elastic band to our car. There's two points this needs to be fixed to. The back axle and a fixed point somewhere on the front of the chassis. So first of all, your back axle needs some kind of pin or tag or something that sticks up that will catch the elastic band so that we can wind the elastic band around the axle. What I'm going to use to do this is this little ring with some screw thread on it. You won't have exactly this thing. If you wanted something different to fix onto there, your tag could be made of all kinds of materials. Even just a small piece of cardboard sticking up and secured in place with some tape, as long as it's stiff enough to not bend under the tension of the elastic band. So you should now be able to see that small metal pin which is sticking out of the axle, like so. My other fixed point is going to be at the front of the vehicle here. One end needs to attach around this little pin on my axle. The other end I need to attach to a point somewhere at the front of my vehicle. I take my elastic band, pass it through here, pass it through that stick, and then pull backwards. And I think I might have just spotted a problem. Let me show you what it is. My chassis is not strong enough. Back to the drawing board. Now I did consider using something different and starting again, but actually I've had a rethink. Maybe I could reinforce the base of this to keep it rigid. I've got lots of pencils hanging around, so maybe I can use one of those to strengthen the body of this vehicle. The two pencils now stop the vehicle from bending. Next, I need to take my elastic band again. I pass it through like this and then put the elastic band through itself, like that. And now I can pull it back, loop it onto my back axle. And now what I need to do is turn this. Can you see? As I turn, the elastic band wraps round and round and round the pencil and is under more and more tension all the time. When I let go, this actual axle should spin around. There we go. My vehicle is now complete and I've put a mat on the table here because the surface of the table was too smooth and all that was happening was the wheels were spinning around and the car was staying still. The carpet introduces friction. This is something you'll probably find at home. So ready to test, I take my elastic band, I loop it around the little tag there on the rear axle and I twist. I'm putting more and more energy into my elastic band. That's nicely charged. And I let go. You see what happens. It moves a short distance. As you can see, my vehicle works, but it could do with some improvement. This is part of the engineering process. What I should do now is take my vehicle and look at ways that I could improve it. Or I can start all over again. I've learnt lessons from the mistakes that I've made and I can continue to improve on my design. This is what engineers do all the time. We would like to see how you get on. So I'd really like it if you could film your finished vehicle in action and then share that video with us. There's a number of ways you can do that and the information um, is on the accompanying sheet. Thank you for joining in with our engineering challenge and we're really looking forward to seeing the results.